Hey, what's up guys? In this episode, Baraka gets a setup and a couple more little nods. So before I could uh, put the strings back on and move forward with the setup, there was a couple of little jobs I had to do. Uh, the first one was uh, the string tree. This guy is the original and you can see just how wide it is. In fact, it was so wide that the B string was kind of catching and rubbing on, on one side of it. But the main problem was that with two screws, um, you have to thread the A string underneath and through a, a little gap. And that's okay with a new string, but you know, when you're taking strings on and off to, to clean them, or you want to just try different string brands out or gauges or whatever, getting a curled up string end through that little gap is kind of a pain in the neck. Um, and when I looked closer at the headstock design, the D-string post is actually close enough to the nut, not even really needing a string tree, especially if I put an extra wrap or two of string on that post. So I went ahead and made a basic two-string string tree out of some scrap brass and also a length of stainless steel tube. Initially, the stainless steel tube was cut to 6mm, but since I took this photograph, I've actually recut it. It was a little bit low, and now it's 8.5mm. I also wanted to reuse the original screw hole, so with the other screw hole, I simply um, filled it with a, a piece of dowling that was topped with uh, maple scrap that I'd actually tapered. You can see that technique in one of my other videos. I'll, I'll post a link for that. The other little job I had to do before I put the strings on was to add some foam under the pickups. Sometimes foam gets really hard or it starts to perish and whatever, and in that case it has to go. The foam in this, in, in this base was still fine, it had just lost a bit of its springiness. And being able to effectively adjust the pickup heights is super important for a good setup. Next was to string the base up and Again, before I put the strings on, I just gave the truss rod a, a quarter turn or thereabouts, um, knowing that the rod had been slackened off in the previous video for my uh, sort of basic fret press. From there, normally you would go ahead and set the relief, but because the bridge had been all pulled apart, I actually just eyeballed the relief and got the saddle heights into the ballpark first, and then did the proper check on the relief and adjustment of the relief. It's a kind of a grey area there and you'll find that uh, certain bases will respond and play better with less relief and others with more relief. Um, but I would say if you're going to measure it, you probably want to be in the um, 15 thou sort of range as a, as a mid-range to start with. Most techs will just kind of eyeball it by pressing the first fret and so on. Obviously if you're going to use a feeler gauge, you need to put a capo on the first fret to free your hand up to use the feeler gauge. After you've set the relief, you can go ahead and um, get the nut slots to the right height. But as soon as I started filing the original nut on this base, I realized that it was just a really soft sort of ABS plastic or something. So I decided to replace it with a piece of brass. The brass is a nice material to work with. It's a little hard on your files, but on the other hand, a brass nut will last pretty much forever, I would think.
final height adjustments, but it's really a matter of slacking the string off, working them on the slot, and then putting the string back on and pulling it up almost to pitch. I normally pull it up half a step under pitch to gauge its height. Again, um, when you press the string down to the second fret, you want to see just a bit of daylight under the G string um, above the uh, first fret. If you're going to measure this stuff, I'd recommend perhaps being around four thou and then gradually having a little more uh, distance as you cross the board over to the thicker strings. The B string will be, I guess, around about 10 thou. Height adjustment on nut slots can also depend on the style of playing you do and the sort of, uh, you know, how heavy you play and all that sort of stuff. So these are just a ballpark and a good sort of guideline, I think, to get you started. Once the nut slots are dialed in, then you can move on to the saddle heights. I would double check the relief at this stage. Again, if you've had to adjust the truss rod, sometimes these adjustments can take a few minutes or hours or even days to fully um, stop shifting. Um, so double check the relief and then move on to the, the saddle heights. String height adjustment is a very personal thing. I've got friends who play the upright bass predominantly and they have their electric bass set with really high action because they just find it a much easier transition between the two instruments. Uh, on the other hand, you know, famously, uh, Flea, for example, plays with very low action. Um, so, so this is a place where you really can um, go to town and, and, and find what works for you. Personally, I think my action is medium or just under medium. And by that, what I have is at the 10th fret under the G string, I'll have between 1.5 and 2 millimetres and then again just a hair more as you go across the board and the B string will be between 2.5 and, and 3 millimetres above the 10th fret. It's really important to use the right Allen keys on your grub screws. Uh, if you're using a Fender style bridge that's from Asia, like this base, virtually all of those, that, certainly the ones I've come across, have M3 grub screws which means the Allen key you need is a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Don't be tempted to use an Imperial that's close because uh, you're very likely to round out the Allen key um, or the grub screw. The, another thing I recommend is if your bridge has the black steel type grub screws, I recommend actually replacing them with stainless steel. You can buy M3 grub screws in two millimeter graduations. I've actually replaced Two of the grub screws in the g-string saddle because they were proud of the g-string and you can catch your hand on that um, or it can cut the fabric inside your gig bag and, and sort of wear that out so i think it's nice to uh, put the right size grub screws in string saddles so the next step is to set the intonation so i'm going to make sure the whole base is in tune first then it's just a matter of playing an open string uh, harmonic on the 12th fret uh, and comparing that to the fretted note on the 12th fret and in this case I'll also play a few up the board and they're sharp and so that means that I need to lengthen the string um, which means bringing the saddle back So that's fine and I can go on and do that with the other four strings and finally it's just a matter of setting the pickup heights I normally just do this by ear with my uh, bench amp here uh, but I always make sure I have a screwdriver in my gig bag because there's every chance you'll need to adjust them or tweak them slightly after a sound check or your first gig or two single chord pickup really hums. Might have to do something about that in the next video. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.